I became a nurse because in my country, Haiti, healthcare is lacking. And I realized that the nurses play such a great role in caring for people. So with the knowledge and the experience that I'm gaining from here, I'm hoping that one day I'll go back and bring it back to my people in Haiti. My name is Annie Sinfleur Del Brun. I work as a nurse at New York Presbyterian Hospital and I won the DAISY Award. The DAISY Award is a award that's given to nurses who go above and beyond. I think I was chosen for this award because of the care that I give to patients, especially the very sick one. Besides working with adults, I'm also passionate about children, and this is why I'm involved in activities that target a younger population, such as stocking with um, care, first day project, and the Ronald McDonald House. I am passionate about being a nurse. I'm passionate about taking care of people. I feel like it is also about something bigger than, you know, taking care of sick people. You have to take um, care of people when they're well also. So being part of other activities such as running a food drive, giving, you know, back to kids, whatever it is, it's another way to just, you know, um, be part of a community, caring for others. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are calling in from. Thank you so much for joining us today on this very special live event. Um, my name is Deirdre O'Regan. I am the Senior Director of Recruitment here at O'Grady Payton International. We are honored to have one of our esteemed partners with us this morning, New York Presbyterian, uh, based in New York City and its surrounding boroughs. And we are joined today by Willie Manzano, Group SVP and Chief Nursing Executive at New York Presbyterian. We are also joined by Mary Lou Prado Inzarello, VP of Nursing Operations, and Laura Brin, uh, Director of Talent Acquisition. So thank you so very much for taking time out of your extremely busy schedules to join us this morning. Um, I can see that we are getting much participation from all over the world. So again, thank you uh, international nurses for joining us today. To learn more about the many opportunities available at New York Presbyterian, life in New York City and how to get started on your US journey. So I am going to hand it over to Willie to introduce herself. But before we do that, uh, we will be hosting a live Q&A session at the end of the presentation where you will have the opportunity to have your questions answered live. Throughout the presentation, also, you will see a link pop up regularly. That link will take you directly to the O'Grady Payton International application to submit your application today. So we encourage you to do this. And with that, I will hand it over to Willie to introduce herself, followed by Mary Lou and then Laura. Thank you so much. Over to you, Willie. Thank you so much, Deidre. And good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all of you. Uh, my name is Willie Manzano. I am the Chief Nursing Executive at New York Presbyterian uh, in New York. So what do I do? Uh, basically, I am responsible for all of nursing across our New York Presbyterian healthcare system. And you'll hear a lot more about who we are, how many hospitals we have, et cetera. But essentially, I work very closely with each chief nurse of the hospital. We have 10, 11 hospitals, if you count the extra hospital that we work with. Um, and I set the vision for nursing. I work very closely with each chief nurse officer um, in setting a strategic plan to advance nursing, to support nursing practice, um, to support nurses across the system. And the ultimate goal is really to make sure that we're providing the best care possible to all of our patients. Um, and so I wanna thank you all for your interest. Thank you for joining us today. And, and hopefully you'll hear a lot of really useful information um, and we hope to hear back from you and potentially have you join our team here at New York Presbyterian. So thanks again for being here today with us.
Ditcher, I'm sorry. Ditcher, Can I'm you sorry. hear me? Okay, I think you're trying to introduce me. Uh, good morning, everyone. I am glad and excited to participate in today's call and meet you all. I am part of Real Team and I'm Mary Lou Friday and Zerlo, Vice President of Nursing Operations, Corporate Nursing. I oversee the daily operations of several centralized functions that support our 11 campuses or hospitals. That's uh, nursing operations, education, research magnet, nursing practice, nursing quality, and academic partnerships, among others. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm so happy to be here today. My name is Laura Brin. Uh, I am the Director of Talent Acquisition for New York Presbyterian across the enterprise, and I oversee all of the recruitment for our nursing staff across the organization, as well as our perioperative staff. I've been a nurse uh, for over 20 years um, and have worked in various roles um, across NYP for the last 10 years. It's a wonderful organization to work for, and I'm really excited to, to, to um, be presenting to all of you today. Thank you, Laura, and thank you, Willie, and thank you, Mary Lou, again, for taking time out of your extremely busy schedule to uh, joining us this morning. Uh, I know everybody online is excited uh, to learn more about the many opportunities available at New York Presbyterian, and uh, Laura will go through a presentation here shortly, but I do want to highlight where we have our attendees coming from. We've got nurses from the Philippines, London, Nigeria, Toronto, Kenya. So continue letting us know where you're calling in from. Um, and with that, I am going to hand it over to Laura, but a quick reminder to pop your questions in the chat and you will have an opportunity to get those answered live. Um, and also, uh, you'll see the link pop up here periodically um, for, for you to submit your application today. Um, and yes, Jennifer, we are really excited as well. So with that, I will hand it over to Laura. Terrific. Thank you. Um, and it's really fun to see all the comments from people at the bottom to see where everyone's calling in from. How exciting um, that we get to, to, to present to all of you today. Um, so we can go to the next slide. Uh, just a little bit of background um, about New York Presbyterian, who we are uh, and where we're located. So New York Presbyterian uh, is one of the nations in the U.S. Uh, most comprehensive, integrated academic health care systems. Um, we have multiple services ranging from primary care to sophisticated specialties. People come from all over the world to seek care at um, one of our 10 um, or 11 organizations, as Willie mentioned. Um, and we are affiliated with two of the world's most premier academic medical centers, Weill Cornell uh, and Columbia University. Um, we are a leader in medical education, groundbreaking research, and innovative criti criti uh, clinical care. So it's a really exciting organization to work for. And you can see that with these 10 hospitals comes uh, 10 different locations, um, ranging from in New York City itself to out in the suburbs a bit, um, across the, the five boroughs of New York and, and just outside in Hudson Valley and Westchester. Next slide. So just a few numbers to look at. Um, as we mentioned, there are 10 campuses. We have over 4,000 beds um, across our organization. So we do see a lot of patients. We have 10,000 affiliated physicians that we work with um, and 38,000 employees, um, amazing employees. Um, <clears throat> we, see, we have 2.6 million visits annually, uh, 26,000 infant births, uh, and 556 visits to our emergency uh, visits annually. We are ranked in the top 10 hospitals in the nation by Use News and World Report, which um, we work really hard to ensure that we are providing the, the most uh, quality care uh, for all, every patient that we serve. Um, we're really committed to making sure that our community is supported by the care that we provide to them. Um, and then also making sure that we're supporting the providers of that care, which those being our nurses, our physicians, our teams that we work with every single day to make sure that patients are taken care of um, effectively and safely. Next slide. 
I'm going to turn this one over to Mary Lou just to talk a little bit about the nursing workforce and what we look uh, look like for our nursing workforce at NYP. Mary Lou. Thank you, Laura. Uh, in terms of our nursing workforce at New York Presbyterian, we have almost 11,000 uh, registered nurses. Our average age, as you can see, is 40.3, and 14.3% of our nurses are male. Our bachelor's degree uh, in nursing or higher degree rate is 94%. And our national certification rate is 36%, which are all above uh, the national benchmarks. And really speak highly of our culture of nursing excellence at New York Presbyterian. Eight of our hospitals have magnet designation from the American Nurses Credentialing Center's Magnet Recognition Program, which is the highest and most prestigious distinction that a healthcare organization can earn for nursing excellence and innovation. And literature supports that being a magnet hospital is one of the reasons why nurses stay. So it could be staff empowerment for a clinical nurses to be able to, to have an, in, uh, independent decisions related to their nursing practice. Transformational leadership, right? Leaders who can really support their staff. Uh, professional nursing practice and great professional um, nursing environment. As you can see on the left side of the screen, 50% of our nurses have been working at New York Presbyterian five years or more. Thank you, Laura. Thanks, Mary Lou. Next slide, please. So where is New York? Um, for those of you who aren't familiar with where we're located within the United States, um, we are on the northeastern portion of the U.S. where um, where the blue uh, is, is is focused in on. Uh, we border uh, the uh, states of New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Connecticut, Massachusetts, and Vermont. Uh, we New York City uh, is the most populous city in the U.S. with more than eight million residents. Uh, and New York City is also this little sliver here. You can see it. Um, it's on the Atlantic Ocean, um, which lends itself to really wonderful location, um, you know, for beaches and being waterfront and lots of um, activities that you can participate in there. New York City really is the gateway for immigration to the U.S. with, with as many as 800 languages spoken, uh, which contributes to really a culturally rich and diverse community. Um, and New York Presbyterian um, really supports and uh, diversity and does have a very diverse workforce. Next slide, please. So this um, just speaks to some of the variety of lifestyle options that we have. Um, given that we have 10 locations across our organization, um, we have locations within the heart of New York City um, to our outer borough neighborhoods. Um, so if you're looking to live in a high rise in New York City, we have hospitals located there or um, outside in the boroughs where there might be a few more trees. Um, this picture in the background is actually in Brooklyn, New York. Um, and, you know, you get a little bit more space, a little bit more nature. And then if you're going out to a place like Hudson Valley, where it says Westchester here, um, that's, you know, really more of a community based environment. You'll be, you know, driving around uh, in in sort of tree, uh, you know, forests and trees. And it's, it's a really beautiful place to live. So it's really um, a place, New York, where you can live in so many different areas and, and our hospital uh, locations really have and support all those different types of lifestyles for you. Next slide, please. So what is life like in New York? Um, so I just wanted to go briefly through um, our edu you know, education. So if you're living in New York, uh, we have excellent public and private school options. We have an extensive public school system, both for, uh, you know, from elementary school up to high school, but also um, higher education, we have um, more uh, institutions of any city worldwide. So there are tons of options for education um, that you can look into. Some notable private universities are Barnard College, Columbia University, of course, Cornell University, Fordham University, uh, New York University or NYU, and then Iona University, which is actually affiliated with NYP. And we do um, work very closely with them to ensure that those um, that the students who go there are have jobs where uh, at one of our hospitals. 
for housing. New York City is a very densely populated city. So many people enjoy living in apartments. I myself live in an apartment with my three kids and my husband uh, in Brooklyn. And it, it really creates a, a strong community of people. Um, and so that's, that's really the norm here. Um, but you can also live in the suburbs or one of the outer boroughs to get a little bit more space, a little bit more nature um, for further options as well. Uh, transportation and getting around is so easy in New York, which is so nice. I lived, I've lived, i lived in New York for uh, over 10 years and I didn't buy a car until two years ago because you can really get a, around through mass transit in New York City. It runs 24 hours a day uh, in the form of subways, buses, and trains. Um, so there's always a way to get to work, to get to, you know, go see, go have entertainment, go out to eat. 52% um, of households in New York City do not own a car. So that's quite a significant number of individuals that don't need a car, don't have to drive around, but um, you can own one too. And there is parking here as well. Um, some of the outer locations in Westchester, um, a car will come, you know, you probably will need one to be able to get around. Um, but, but in the city, it's really not necessary. There are two major airports here if you wanted to do some uh, travel either um, across the U.S. or internationally. John F. Kennedy or JFK Airport and LaGuardia Airports are the closest to New York City and where um, individuals here will, will often use. Next slide, please. So some of the New York attractions, as you know, New York City is a huge tourist attraction um, for people. It's, it's a very exciting city to live in. There is so much energy, so much to see, um, really a rich um, a, a cultural experience. Um, just some of the pictures, uh, images up here highlight really all that there is to do, but it doesn't encompass everything because there are so there's you never run out of things to do in New York City. Uh, Times Square is the first picture. Um, it's a really lively area with lights and billboards and Broadway theater. Our family goes to a Broadway show probably once a month. Um, it's so fun uh, to experience that. Tons of restaurants, shopping and entertainment. Uh, the Statue of Liberty is in the second picture, of course. Um, New York is home to the Statue of Liberty, Ellis Island. Uh, lots of museums, endless museums, vibrant music scene, art, fashion, and a huge culinary scene as well. Um, if you're interested in sports, um, we have a lot of sports teams um, and events that you can go to as well. I just put some of the teams up here that are um, New York centric, but it's not all of them. There, are, There's much more. The US Open tennis tournament is here too, which is always an exciting time. Um, and then also just you know to the right, this is a picture of Central Park. So Central Park is a place where a lot of New Yorkers go to seek respite, to rest, to have a picnic. Um, New York does have a lot of uh, parks, public parks that people can go to just to sort of escape from apartment living and see people. And there's tons of stuff to do there. Um, just outside of New York City, too, if you want to take a quick drive, you can go to, you know, there's hiking and biking trails um, and a lot of, you know, skiing during the winter. So we do have all four seasons and we enjoy all the different things um, that New York and New York City have to offer um, with those seasons as well. Next slide. So I just wanted to talk a little bit and, and cl really close it out with um, how we think, how we recognize um, the employees that work at our hospital every day. New York Presbyterian really values the work that our nurses, that our physicians, that every single one of the individuals that support patient care do. So we do hold appreciation events um, at each of our campus to really celebrate our employees for the amazing work that they do every day. We know it's not easy, um, but it is very rewarding work and we want to reward our employees as well. So we'll have moments where we give out tickets to various events that are occurring throughout the city and then also use platforms um, to recognize individuals who are doing a great job or go above and beyond by just sending a thank you card or a thank you email um, and really wanting to make sure that we appreciate everything that our employees do. And it really makes it a place that people want to want to be at, want to belong at. Um, and New York Presbyterian supports that. And I think that's it for me. I want to thank all of you so much. And I'll turn it back over to Deirdre. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Laura. Uh, great information. Uh, New York truly has something for everybody. And I love the engagement on the comments. And so thank you so much. Uh, and lots and lots of questions that we will get to uh, here shortly. 
Um, but I would now like to introduce you to another very special guest who is joining us today. Uh, John Carlo is living his American dream as an ER nurse at New York Presbyterian currently. Um, so just after finishing his night shift, he is joining us today uh, to give us some um, information on you know, what it's like living in New York City, his experience at New York Presbyterian, and also his U.S. journey. Uh, so welcome, John Carlo. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Uh, truly appreciate it. And so can you uh, tell us a little bit about your story, um, your experience and your journey here to the U.S.? Okay, so hello everyone. So my name is John Carlo. I'm one of the OGP nurses here and uh, currently working in New York Presbyterian. So I'm assigned as an emergency nurse in Wild Cornell Medical Center. Uh, so I am originally from the Philippines. I finished nursing around 2010, worked in the Philippines for six years as an ER nurse. And then uh, to further my career, I also moved to the UK. I see that there are viewers here who, were, who are living in London. So I work in London as well as an ER nurse for five years. And then now uh, I moved here in um, New York City, in New York Presbyterian Wild Cornell as an ER nurse. Thank you, John. Yeah. Thank you for you. Uh, so can you talk a little bit about your transition to the US? Mm -hmm. uh, what support did you receive from O'Grady Payton? Okay, so I would say that um, in general, this transition was really smooth. Um, even if I was still outside the U.S. Uh, moving here, I already had support from OGP, from the relocation services. Um, they already helped me trying to look for um, the place to live near the facility or near the hospital where I work. And then during the first week of my arrival, I also had support from the community liaison um, although I'm familiar with New York City, I have been in, I have been in New York several times before, um, but the community liaison helped me to um, set up um, all the civil documents that I need to um, to have before starting my work here in NYP. And um, also, I have a very supportive clinician support, Renee. Um, she liaised perfectly with the um, NYP clinical educators and the emergency department to assist me with my orientation and my clinical manager as well, Mark Jones. Um, and then from the start until now, they've been checking on me uh, regularly every month um, to see how everything's going in and out of work. Thank you. I know that uh, this, this process can be quite daunting sometimes. So yeah. it's really important that you have that support, not just through the process, yeah. but also when you arrive in, in the US, that, that's critical as well. Yeah. Um, and uh, Jile just uh, just uh, pinned us here and said that you introduced her to O'Grady Payton. So such a great yeah. ambassador and New York Presbyterian ambassador. So thank you, John. Uh, what's your favorite part about living in New York City? So, so I think my favorite part of living in New York City um, up until now is the fact that I'm currently living in New York City. From someone who is from the Philippines who just sees New York how it is in media, how is it in the movies, it still feels surreal to you know, think about it now that I currently live here and work here. So for me, that's uh, one of my one of the, um, the favorite parts for me. And also, as what Laura said, there's really lots of things to do in New York. You never get tired of the attractions that you can see around New York City. And uh, New York City has lots to offer, more than what we see in media, what we see in movies. Um, you can really enjoy lots of things, lots of fun and free things to do around the city. Thank you so much, John. Uh, so, um, when you when you started on your on your in your process of coming here to to the U.S., yes. uh, why did you choose OGP to be your partner in that mm -hmm. journey? So the reason, the main reason why I chose OGP to be part of my journey is that. Um, I believe that OGP supports my my goal in my career. So um, OGP has wide range of facilities which supports my goal to further my career, especially my career, my specialty in emergency nursing. And also from recommendations and feedbacks from other OGP nurses as well, um, they said, and in my experience now, um, OGP has been supportive um, with the transition of international nurses. Um, to the U.S. and also with the support in, in every facility that they've been to. 
So that's for me, that's the main reason why I chose OGP. And I'd say that um, it was not a mistake choosing OGP. I wouldn't be here, I wouldn't be in New York City and in NYP um, if I didn't choose OGP. Thank you so much, John. And you're a very, very experienced clinician and had many opportunities to choose from uh, when yeah. uh, coming here to the U.S. Why did you choose New York Presbyterian? Okay, so the main reason why I chose New York Presbyterian, having been to New York City several times, so I, I was already decided up and, uh, until that point that I this is the place where I'd like to live, this is the place where I'd like to work. And then I knew about New York Presbyterian from um, nurses here in NYC. Like uh, New York Presbyterian is one of the um, top performing hospitals, not just in the state of New York, but throughout the United States as well. Um, since I work in the ER, my main specialty is emergency nursing. So I'd like to work in a facility that provides level one trauma care for patients because I know that I really learn a lot in these types of facility. So NYP being a, re, um, uh, what you call this, a training hospital as well. So it enables me to learn a lot in terms of uh, managing ER patients. And also they have a very comprehensive burn care um, in the ER. So it refreshed and uh, my interest with uh, burn care for patients in the emergency department. And being with NYP now, I see how they lead in medicine. And um, I see now the reason why they're one of the top hospitals here in the United States. It's, it's amazing working here with amazing people and amazing team. Thank you so much, John. Uh, we truly appreciate you joining us this morning. Uh, thank you for all of your insights. Um, we've got uh, a lot of questions about what it's like living in New York City, a lot of excitement from our guests this morning. Uh, yeah. so thank you for being uh, an amazing OGP and New York Presbyterian ambassador. Uh, have a wonderful weekend off. I know you're off for the weekend, thank you. so hope that you're yeah. doing something fun. And again, thank you so much for joining us this morning. We really appreciate you're welcome. it. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you also. Thank you, John. Uh, okay, with that, we will get into our Q&A. Um, we've got some questions coming in, um, but uh, we want to start with some commonly asked questions uh, that, uh, that are asked quite frequently on, on these events. So the first question will be for New York Presbyterian. Um, I think Laura will take this one or Mary Lou. Uh, talk to us a little bit about the orientation for international nurses at New York Presbyterian. Yes, thank you, Deidre. So our orientation at New York Presbyterian for our international nurses, we know that it's a transition um, for a nurse to come to the United States and to another um, environment to um, get acclimated. So we make sure that the orientation that our international nurses receive, um, <clears throat> excuse me, is the same that our nurses receive as well. So it, we don't rush through it. We It's very comprehensive. So in, it's initially learning about NYP, um, the culture at NYP, um, our standard practices, um, across the organization. And then our nursing education team really partners with the international nurse and develops a unique uh, orientation plan with them to make sure that depending on which specialty they are in, that they're able to get all of the training on any devices that we utilize at the hospital, medications, meet the staff, are able to go onto their unit and see the environment that they'll be working on so that they feel welcomed uh, into our organization. And at every step of the way, there is an educator working with you as well as the OGP team as well to make sure that you're meeting all the milestones that you need to, to ensure a successful transition into a nursing role across um, in whatever department or area you are working on. I don't know if John Carlos still in, but I would love to hear from him too, if he has any um, information on how his orientation and transition into practice went um, with the education team um, in the ED there. Oh, am I in? Hello? Hi, John Carla. We yeah. can hear you. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. I second that. Um, when I started my orientation, so I went through orientation as the same as other um, newly hired staff as well in the ER. And uh, my clinician support, um, liaise properly with the NYP um, 
clinical educator for the emergency department. Um, so I, I didn't feel rushed at all. I, I felt that the orientation was sufficient. Um, the staff who were my preceptors um, in the clinical area. So, so I had didactics prior to working in the clinical area. And then uh, the preceptors are very supportive. The clinical educator for emergency department, Camille Park, she was really supportive as well. Um, so when I finished my orientation, I felt really um, that uh, I, I feel that I can perform the job well. Um, yeah, it, it didn't feel rushed at all. Great. Thank you, Giancarlo. Yeah. Um, and that's exactly what we want. We want to make sure that every nurse that joins a team, um, we know that everybody doesn't learn exactly the same. So we want to meet everyone where they are um, in their transition into NYP. Um, I don't know if Mary Lou wants to add anything to that, um, but that's sort of it in, a, in essence. Mary Lou, anything else to add to that? No, I think you, you guys covered it. So um, <laughs> as Jan Carlos said, we offer a lot of like orientation weeks and we don't rush at all. You know, you start from classroom, didactic as Giancarlo yes. Yes. Um, just mentioned, and that's almost two weeks depending on your area of specialty. Then you go to the clinical area, to the clinical unit of your specialty, paired with a unit preceptor who's trained to do this and also the educator. And depending on which specialty you land on, you could be uh, with that preceptor doing clinical orientation for eight to 10 weeks. So there's a robust um, orientation program. Thank you both. And thank you, Giancarlo, uh, for jumping thank back you. on and uh, giving us your experience in orientation as well. Really appreciate it. Uh, so we've got lots and lots of questions coming through um, and we will do our very best to get to all of them. And, but we also have uh, O'Brady Payton International team members working, um, moderating the questions on the back end as well. And after the event, we do go into uh, the, the, the recorded event and make sure that we answer all questions if we do not have the opportunity to do them on the live event. Uh, so the next question I will take is, I have recently taken and passed the uh, NCLEX Next Generation exam, so congratulations to you, and have a current active license in New York. Um, how, can, how can OGP help me in securing a, uh, a visa-sponsored job? So what you will do is click on the on the link. Um, Amy will uh, will put it front and center here again. Click on that link. It will take you directly to the O'Grady Payton application, and and our recruitment team will be reaching out to you uh, within 24 to 48 hours. So please make sure that you do that today, um, so that we can get your application and uh, schedule a conversation with you and get your application in front of the New York Presbyterian hiring managers. So thank you so much. Um, another question, I am currently an ICU nurse practicing in Qatar. Would I, will I be able to practice ICU at NYP? Um, so we look very closely at experience coming from Qatar, highly skilled. Um, then yes, you'll work with our clinical team on identifying where the perfect position is for you. We wanna make sure that your transition is seamless, that you are successful on your assignment here at uh, New York Presbyterian. Um, so yes, we, uh, we will do our very best to make that match as efficient as possible for you. Um, I have another question for the New York Presbyterian team. What specialties are you currently recruiting for? I can take that. Um, thank you, Deirdre. So uh, across our organization, we are recruiting for our, you saw uh, Giancarlo in our emergency departments across the organizations, in our critical care uh, units. Um, we really uh, would love to have critical care experienced RNs join our team. Um, we have um, OR, our operating room and our periap spaces. Um, opportunities there as well as um, as well as our med surge departments, um, and then also our pediatric specialties as well. So our regular pediatric units, um, the critical care pediatric units, or so our NICUs and PICUs, uh, and then also our um, uh, labor and delivery areas to support maternal health as well. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, Question here for OGP, are we still filing uh, immigration petitions uh, during retrogression? Yes, 100%. 
Um, so it's more important than ever to get your place in line. So I would encourage you to submit your application today, uh, speak with one of our uh, recruitment professionals, and we will get your process started. But yes, absolutely, uh, we are still filing immigration petitions. Um, another question, if I did not pass NCLEX through the New York board, can I still work at New York Presbyterian? Yes, absolutely. So uh, we will endorse your license to New York. Um, so that's not a concern at all. It doesn't matter where you passed it, your NCLEX from, then we will endorse your license to New York State. Um, I have one more question for New York Presbyterian. Uh, are the shifts eight hours or 12 hours or a combination of both? I could take this one. Uh, so the positions that are open, our nurses work 12 hour shifts. Um, so they're, you know, we cover, which are either the day shifts or the night shifts. Um, in our operating rooms, it may be a little bit of a, a different uh, timing wise um, when the start time and the end time is, but we do work, to, the nurses do work 12 hour shifts at, at New York Presbyterian. Perfect, thank you so much. Uh, question here from Gilbert, um, does OGP recruit dialysis nurses? Yes, we do Gilbert. Um, so I would encourage you to apply today and get your application in front of our, our recruitment team. And, Couple more questions here for the OGP team. Uh, we have a question from Gile. I am a UK RN currently working at University College uh, London Hospital and in the OR for almost 11 years. I just passed my uh, New York NCLEX and English, very interested in applying to NYP. I get yes, so click on that uh, link that is uh, in the chat right now. And that is a unique link that we created uh, particularly for this event. So we will know that you are interested in applying to New York Presbyterian when you click on that link and we will get your application in front of the hiring managers and, and congratulations on passing and flex style. And do you have jobs for nurses in the emergency department in major trauma centers? Yes, absolutely we do. Laura just spoke about the open positions um so uh so ab absolutely yes um and cyprian also had a question about continuing education many of our uh, O'Grady Payton nurses continue with their education uh here in the u.s we've had many of our nurses promote to manager positions etc so yes lots of opportunities available for you to do so um so thank you so much for that question cyprian very much appreciated and then i want to take a couple of more questions um the so there was a question here on positions at Cornell, particularly Cornell, and they're looking for emergency room positions. Do we have emergency room positions at Cornell? Yes. The answer is yes. We Over do. To you, Laura. <laughs> We do, um, and we have positions in our critical care areas as well. So while Cornell, um, as John Carlo, he is working in the emergency department at Wild Cornell. So absolutely, feel free to apply. Um, we would definitely love to to hear from you. Perfect. Thank you so much, Laura. A uh, couple of questions on the O'Grady Payton contract. Uh, so our O'Grady Payton contract is uh, the shortest in the industry. It is two years, uh, approximately two years, four thousand one hundred and sixty straight time hours. Uh, so the benefits of uh, partnering with O'Grady Payton to, to start your, your U.S. journey is, of course, that shorter contract. Uh, of course, many of our nurses choose to stay at, their, at the facility that they are originally placed at. You are placed at one facility for the duration of your, of your contract with O'Grady Payton. Um, a key point here as well is your orientation is at your facility of placement, so that's very important. So you acclimate to the environment uh, immediately. You are assigned a preceptor and it has a very supportive uh, orientation through the New York Presbyterian program. Um, and as part of the contract, uh, you do get you do qualify for many benefits. So 401k, vision, dental, etc., and also 120 hours of paid time off. So uh, today is the day to apply. So please make sure that you are uh, applying with that link that Amy will put up again. And Roxanne, yes, if you apply today through that link, uh, it will be routed to our recruitment team and then uh, routed to the NYP team for interview. Okay. 
Yes, so Cyprian, we just answered that question for you. All right, Kishin, um, you're currently in the process of getting job offers from OGP, interested in working with New York Presbyterian. Please reach out to your placement manager. Um, they will make sure that, uh, that they route that over to the New York Presbyterian team. Um, so whoever your placement manager is, please make sure that they know that you're very interested in uh, interviewing with New York Presbyterian. Okay, let me see what other questions we have here. All right, uh, Gilbert, yes, we answered your dialysis question. And so there is, do we have any available positions for PACU? Oh, sorry, we do. Okay. Um, we we have uh, we have positions in our PACU and in our operating rooms. Um, so certainly, if if that's your area of expertise, we would we would definitely take a look at your profile, your experience, um, and would love to to um, to meet you. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Laura. Uh, so, Katie, and yes. Um, I did address that retrogression question. So absolutely, we are still filing immigration petitions. So it's even more important to get your place in line right now. Uh, we have navigated retrogression many times in our 40 years experience. Uh, so we'd love to uh, get you connected with our team of experts and they can help navigate you through your immigration process. Uh, we support you every step of the way. Uh, the immigration process, having been through it myself, uh, I'm originally from Ireland and went through the uh, immigration process quite some time ago, um, but it can be scary and it can be uh, complex. So it's very important that you have a team of experts that are guiding you through that and can help you every step of the way. Uh, our team of experts have been doing this for quite some time. Our senior director of immigration um, has been with the organization for 34 years and is an expert in everything immigration, be us in retrogression or not. Um, so we would love to hear from you and submit your application today and we will take care of you every step of the way. So thanks for that question. And Deirdre, I saw that there's a, a comment uh, by JJ Kim asking about the neuro ICU. We do yeah. have uh, neuro ICU. We do see trauma patients. We are tra we have trauma centers across our organization. So absolutely, that type of experience is is very much um, sought after and valued. Um, so we would love to consider, um, you know, absolutely apply. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Laura. Lots of questions on available positions. Um, so Laura did reference that in her presentation. Lots and lots of positions available across the 10 campuses. Uh, so please make sure that you are speaking with your recruiter um, on options that are available that will align with your experience. Uh, mm -hmm. Again, we want to make sure that we are that we are making um, a, a really good match and that you'll be successful and that you'll transition well to U.S. nursing practice. Uh, so please, if you have not applied yet, do so now. You will be uh, you will be speaking with their recruiter. They will talk about your experience and they will also tell you what open positions we have across the New York Presbyterian health system and make sure that um, that we are matching you uh, with the right position where you will be successful. Absolutely. All right, lots of questions and we've got still continuing to join us. Um, so appreciate all of the engagement, all of the, uh, all of the activity here. Uh, so Marvin, again, um, asking about open, open positions. Yes, please apply and uh, you will be matched with your personal recruiter and they will walk you through all of the open positions that are available across the health system. Mm -hmm. uh, Ashanti, yes. Um, so we uh, we do file your EB3 sponsorship. Um, so it is a green card sponsorship. Uh, so once we have received your application, we speak to you, uh, then we start the, the process of filing your I-140. Uh, our contracts are approximately two years in duration, so 4,160 hours. Again, the shortest in, in the industry. Um, so please apply today and it will be routed directly to the New York Presbyterian uh, hiring leaders based on the unique link that we created today. 
Thanks for your question. All right. So uh, the consider yes. Uh, so great question about English exams. Uh, so yes, um, Sarah, we are we do accept the PTE exam. Other acceptable English exams are IELTS, TOEFL, and OET. Uh, so yes, we do accept all of those exams. They are accepted through CGFNS as well. Um, so if you have not uh, completed your your English exam. Please do so, as you know, or as you probably know, uh, the English exams are valid for two years. Um, so if you do not, if you have not taken and passed that yet, we would encourage you to do so. And please reach out to us for any support that you need in doing that. Again, we've been, uh, we've been doing this for over 40 years, so have lots of experience in uh, the, the immigration space and also uh, giving you the support to pass that English exam. We know that it can be challenging. Um, we know it can be daunting. Uh, we've heard in some cases that it's, it can be more challenging than, than NCLEX. So let us help you in that. Uh, apply today and uh, you'll be connected with one of our uh, recruiters to help you through that process. Okay, Jail, thank you so much. Jail has submitted her application to OGP. So Jail, you've been very participatory on this live event, so uh, we greatly appreciate it. And I know that you were introduced to O'Grady Payton and New York Presbyterian by John Carlo. So uh, thank you, John Carlo, for being an amazing ambassador as well. That's great. <laughs> thank you so much. Okay, so uh, any questions that we did not get to this morning, we will be sure um, that we get to them uh, after, after the event. Um, but please make sure that you are applying today. Uh, anything that, again, that we did not get to, we'll make sure that we address after the event. I do want to, I do want to take the opportunity to thank our esteemed guests this morning, uh, Willie, Mary Lou, Laura, and John Carlo. Thank you so much for the great information on the health system, the opportunities available within the health system life in New York City, and John for sharing your US journey with us. Thank you for trusting O'Grady Payton with your process. Uh, we really appreciate it. Um, and thank you so much for being a great, a great representative of New York Presbyterian on this live event this morning as well. Uh, we look forward to many more events uh, with New York Presbyterian, uh, but thank you all for joining us this morning. Uh, we have attendees from all over the world. Again, we saw attendees from the Philippines, from the UK, many, many countries in Africa, Canada, South Korea. Uh, so wonderful to see the, uh, the interest in the amazing opportunities that are available for you at New York Presbyterian. So thank you again to our esteemed guests. I uh, hope you have a wonderful weekend and look forward to our next event. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful weekend. Thank you. I took a year off between high school and college and joined the Air Force Reserve. When I joined the military and became a medic, I changed my career path from finance to nursing at that point, since I realized that working alongside physicians and nurses was my passion. Hi, I'm Ashley Gonzalez. I'm the clinical nurse manager here at New York Presbyterian. I believe service members bring a lot to nursing. They bring structure, but they also bring a camaraderie aspect to the hospital in itself. Camaraderie is very important because it just helps the unit in which I work in just work as one. Even on a difficult day, everyone's always there, always helpful. You don't have to ask. Everyone just assumes a role and makes it all better. I feel like there's so much room for growth in NYP. It doesn't matter where you want to go. There's a place for you here. You can do anything you honestly want to do here. The jobs and dreams are endless. <laughs>